How you doing, ladies and gentlemen? It's your host with most griever as always, bringing you guys Jujutsu Kaisen chapter 151 review. Now, this chapter is a love letter to all Maki naysayers, to all power scalers. You know why? You want to know why? Because this chapter, yeah, it's got that 24 frames per second thing that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense how it gets beaten out. I'm still not completely sure on the logistics of that, but for the most part, this is a they fight, right? That That's what it is. And it's a very, it's a really cool chapter. Choreography is really nice. I really enjoyed the chapter. But the thing to take away is that we find out that Noya had respected the one of the most important pages is actually the very first page because we see him as a young man he is considered a genius in the zenin clan we see him as a small child or whatever and he's saying like but there is a black sheep in the family somebody who doesn't have any cursed energy meanwhile i'm a genius i'm a prodigy he's like i how awful that must be how pitiful how would the expression on that person's face how weak they would look and then we see him walk by Toji and we see that like Toji looking fierce now this is where once again uh, This is where I say this is a love letter or sort of a how you like me now Chapter and when I say love letter, I'm being sarcastic to all the naysayers to all the to all the power scalers because literally self-awareness is key in this chapter because now is basically all those people who says Maki you are not Toji you are not that strong like you it's not you you aren't him and that's what and he's pissed and he's fighting against her fighting her longer than I thought but really it did end in one chapter so there you go um, so I think a lot of us called that who understood how powerful Maki has become but I laugh because that it feels like some self-awareness it really does like these are the people that are like She's not Toji yet, and so many people against her maybe of stepping the first foot. Once again, you want to argue she's not as strong as Toji yet? Sure, but now she's in the tier. Now she's stepping up. She's got one foot into that tier. She's doing a transitioning thing right now. Like, everyone seems to be completely ignoring the strength gap that she just busted through. The tier she just broke right through. Um, she broke the sound barrier to get here. And maybe people don't like the way she got here. I'm fine with it, but it's just hilarious to me because he's beaten through her constantly. Like, you know, it's it's not you. Only people like, you know, uh, the one who stands with like Gojo, the one who stands with Toji. That's only me. You aren't him. And I'm just like, that's literally every single person in the community who is against Maki being Toji or becoming like Toji or be ever, ever daring to think that Maki by the end of the series will have surpassed Toji. No, that can't be. And this chapter is basically saying that because that that's the whole, that's the first part of the fight. That's the first part of the chapter. We see his admiration for Toji, how fierce, how dangerous. The references here are not lost on anybody. God damn it, the haircut's the same now. Maki's got Toji's hairstyle, for God's sakes. And um, everything's like that. And the, the funny thing is, is that the first half of the fight is all about that. All about like they're, they're up here. And you are not there. You're just Maki. You're just a woman. You're a failure. You're this. You're that. You're just a freak. You're you're not them. You're not to be admired. You're not you're not cool enough, pretty much, to this guy. And basically, then they actually go through the fight. We see his opinion about strength is simply weight plus speed. So if you're fast enough and the weight behind your fist, you know that kind of idea. So he wants to punch through her at top speed and everything. We understand that. She's going to like she's gained a a, a very endurance hardened uh, steel like body and stuff from the death of Mai and stuff like that. So, but she has been worn down. I mean, it it wasn't nothing. She is banged up, bloody, and beaten from all her consecutive fights she's just endured. And so, you know, she's like, all right, like I'll let you. Like her idea, it seems to be. I don't know why she's there, there's a move title and stuff like that. But from what I understand. Halfway through the chapter, she decides, okay, he's going to move faster, right? Um, and this is where I get a little confused uh, after this point because I don't really understand how you beat out the 24 frames per second, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, but here, she basically just goes, all right. She basically goes in a football move and goes, 
come at me, hit me. But the moment she's betting on the whole, the moment hit you, I caught you doing a Kempachi thing in with no sight, no sound, all, all that stuff, right? Uh, doing a Kempachi here, basically just going, all right, once the moment I feel the impact, sure, you might, you know, break my arm, dislodge my shoulder, break, crush my ribs, but now I got you. And then, then she'll, once she catches him, she'll just crush him. That's the intention here. So this is where uh, he realizes that. He dodges and goes, instead of head-on collision, smack. And does the whole, the 24 frames per second, the projectile jujitsu uh, sorcery, right? And all that stuff. So here's the weird thing, is that it's still, it's the exact same as Nobito's uh, ability back in the Shibi arc. Which, once again, wasn't fully, like, I get the concept of moving at the 24 frames per second. Um, but here, what I'm not understanding is that Noya is moving at top speed smacked her on the arm so now she has to abide by the 24 for 24 frames per second rule and the thing is is that maki figures this out and says that you and nobito aren't just fast but i also felt something strange you make 24 movements per second and with this body i can finally see them and then he she punches him out breaks his jaw by the looks of it and knocks him straight out with one punch slams him into the ground and she he tries to talk and he she just like yeah what what were you trying to say i couldn't hear you end of end of fight you know like so anybody who thought that she, he was actually going to be a match you guys are ridiculous she's been worn down just decimated some of the highest level jiu-jitsu sorcerers and then she fights supposedly the strong guy and still kicks his ass, as far as I'm concerned. So, I don't know what naysayers were expecting. But, this makes total sense to me. But, anyways, other than that, the as I said, the 24 frames per second thing, it's not that it doesn't make sense. But, I'm curious on how one breaks through the 24 frames per second. Is it when you are just faster? If you can move faster than 24 frames per second naturally, then can you break out of it? Right, regardless that they, all right, now you're limited or whatever. Or is it because she says, with this body, I can finally see you move at 24 frames per second. And the whole idea is that if Maki doesn't also go, go with those moves, the idea is that you hit the opponent, now the opponent's locked in to a sequence of moves. If you don't move in that exact way, then you freeze, you know, at frame 11. Like if you did the first 10, then you freeze for one second, and that's what Noya was counting on. With Same with the Dagon fight, I'm still unclear as to what exactly, how these people are breaking out of them, you know? Um, Maki, is, is she just naturally faster? And if you're faster than the opponent, is it one of those things like, okay, we're both moving at 24 frames per second, but my speed stat is still, got, is still higher than yours, even though you've just reduced my speed and increased yours or whatever. Maybe Noya thought he was faster naturally. Is that how it works? Like if the opponent is just naturally faster, if you limit it to the 24 frames, then they see the pattern? Or is that it? When they become so powerful, do they just, it's not that they're naturally faster. They can see the pattern. They can follow the movements. They have some sort of ultra instinct for that. See, I just don't know how, how you beat the technique. That doesn't really seem to be fully fleshed out or explained. Maybe someone in my comment section can explain that part to me. That's the only confusing part. It doesn't take away from this chapter because it still confused me in Shibuya too. And I'm just going to go, okay, but Maki beat it. So it doesn't really matter because we all knew that Maki was going to beat Noya anyways. But uh, yeah, still really solid chapter, but it's a very simple chapter. It's, it's a, they fight and a basically a middle finger to all the Maki uh Againsters, the Maki non sayers the ones who, the, the Toji fanboys who are just complaining that Maki might be as strong as their boy. That's, that's just all it is. That's all this is because Noya is the, is the selfish, he's, he's the, he's that fan. That's what he is. He holds Toji on a pedestal and no, Maki's a woman, Maki's not as cool, Maki can't get that strong, that's impossible, no, 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 no. Refuses, denial, no acceptance, and then gets their ass kicked by Maki in the end and says, sorry, I couldn't hear what you were saying. So, yeah, so that's the idea here. I laughed at it, you know, because I've, I've had this discussion before, and not too many in the fan base actually had, but the, I feel like there's a significant number. It's, it's I don't know, like... 
twenty percent of the fan base, maybe thirty percent of the fan base, and they they just they really love Toji, and uh, and some of them love him a little too much that they they hold him too high, you know. You could argue that for me for other characters and stuff, but it's it's nice to see here confirmed. Noya was was that fan incarnate in this chapter, and I can't get over that. I can't get over how black and white and how blatant. AJ decided to showcase that. It's as though he's there on the Reddits and the Discord. And if I was a manga guy and I had the time, of course, manga guys are, are, of course, very, very tight schedule. But if I had the time, I'd be looking at reviewers. I'd be looking at what people were saying, what people, what the fan base as a majority like and don't like about the direction of my manga. Of course, I'd love to hear the feedback, right? So, and I'm sure some of them get more feedback than others. And maybe, maybe this was that intentional, you know, maybe that's the whole point. But a Toji who's a good guy, you know, that's sort of, I think that's sort of part of the point here. But uh, either way, I really thought the chapter was great. Um, I'm sorry it's late, guys. Sorry about that. Um, just, I, I, I don't know if I said that at the beginning of the review or not. But, uh, of course, this review is a couple days late. Uh, just very, very hectic weekend. Um, just a lot going on. Just didn't have time. I barely had time to do the Friday night stream, and that's basically all I had time for from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So, uh, unfortunately, that's all really the, the other than another commitment with Misk and that Torico stream that we did on his channel. Go check that out. That's the only thing I had time for. So, sorry that this is so late, but uh, the next chapter review will not be late. So, I, I promise you guys that. So. Um, but like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you guys thought about the chapter down in the comment section down below. And don't forget, forget as always, to drink responsibly, as always, as I always do. And we will see you beautiful, wonderful, lovely, loyal fans that will forgive me for having a review a couple days late. So uh, thank you guys so much. We're so close to 600 subscribers. Looking forward to hitting that big 600. And I know we can get there in this month of June. So thanks guys once again. We'll see you back here next time. Peace out.